Hello everybody, uh, I want to show you a short demo today which demonstrates how you can use um, TIPCOS ESB which is called BusinessWorks to integrate different enterprise applications easily and in this use case today I um, want to show you um, how to connect from um, Salesforce so a software as a service cloud um, provider for CRM and um, do some mappings and um, push this data to Tibber, which is um, TIPCO's social network. And um, this demo um, contains two parts. The first part of the demo will show you here a um, finished implementation of this use case. Um, I will demonstrate how you run it and how it looks like. And the second part um, will demonstrate how you develop this, so that you can also see how easy that is. Let's begin with the first part and first um, let's um, tell you this is a virtual machine which I'm running. In this case it's a Linux VM and here um, I have my um, Tibber instance installed on this machine. I have my web browser where um, we go to Salesforce and also to our Tibber instance. So we can just um, put some data here if you, as you see. And of course we have our development environment from BusinessWorks which I use for implement this integration. So, um, as I said first, I want to show you this demo here, which already um, is implemented and runs. We don't have to deploy anything anywhere outside on a server. We just click on the tester and say um, run this process here. So, um, let's do and start this current process here. And we see um, that it is running now. Um, this is um, put in a slow mode so that you can see how it is processing it. Of course, in real time, usually it runs much faster. And um, what this use case is doing here, this process, it gets um, contact data from Salesforce. And um, all you have to do here is to enter your Salesforce query. So Salesforce um, offers a um, SQL similar um, query language called Salesforce Object Query Language. And you just have to add um, this query to this component here and then the query is run. And then we do some mappings and finally we um, post all this information to Tibber. And um, so um, to show you that it really worked, um, I will go to the web browser and um, let's do a refresh here on our Tibber web application. And we see here that um, this post from 2.25 a.m., which is the time here in this Linux machine, um, it did a post um, with all my Salesforce contacts of my Salesforce development um, account and posted them to Tibber automatically. So here you can see that this really worked. It um, received my contacts from Salesforce due to this query here. I did some mapping to aggregate this stuff. I also saved it to a log file um, on my local system here. And then I used the Tibber component to post this stuff um, to Tibber. So um, um, this is how um, the job is really running the process, um, but of course um, probably it's um, the same interest for you how you can implement the stuff because that's really very important because um, with BusinessWorks it's very very easy to implement um, such integrations and doing automatic, automatic stuff and um, therefore um, you just have to use um, different components. Uh, in our palette, like the Tibber components or um, the, uh, the Salesforce components. And um, when you have um, these components, you drag and drop into your workspace. And here you just configure these different components and do some mappings and so on. And um, that's it. Then you can run it and test it and debug it. And um, you, before you don't believe me, I really want to show you how easy it is to create such a process. So um, let's begin here by creating a new process definition. And let's say um, this is our Salesforce demo process. Apply and save. And now let's implement this process here. Um, what I need here is uh, three different components. I will use the Salesforce query component to, to get my data out of um, Salesforce. Then um, you can always drag and drop it from the palette here or just right click and say add resource. I will also add a write to log component to do some logging. And I will do 
some um, mapping here with our mapper component. So um, we have all the components we need. Now next we connect these components. So remember here, this is a very simple use case. I do not do any error handling or conditioning and routing and so on. Um, you can do all of that graphically here too. You can use sub-processes and much other stuff, so it's very easy to do all that complex stuff in real-world use cases. So oh, I have now um, added all my components and um, connected them. And now we just have to configure them one after the other. And let's begin with the Salesforce component. Here you can see um, we need um, a Salesforce connection, right? So to connect to our data. And what I've already um, done before, I have created um, some um, shared resources. So here you can see I connect to SAP and to Twitter and Tibber and Salesforce. And here we see um, the Salesforce connection. I have configured it to use my um, uh, development account of Salesforce. And as you can see, it works here. In practice, of course, you usually do not use hard coding here, but use um, global variables and um, parameters to do this stuff dynamically, um, to implement things like um, user authorization and so on. But in this case, I'm fine with this Salesforce connection here with my private account. And what I also have imported is the Salesforce metadata because um, under the hoods, of course, um, our connectors use the Salesforce um, API. And I have added the metadata so that we can use it in our processes here. So let's go back to our um, Salesforce component. We add the Salesforce connection here. And you see it just offers me the Salesforce connections. We know we need um, this one and not the Tiberos SAP connection. And um, the next thing we have to um, configure the input here. So here we have to tell him what is the Salesforce query we want to use. And in this simple example, I will tell him select ID, first name, last name from contact, where ID equals, and I will do this implementation just um, with a hard coded ID. From my Salesforce account, here you can see this is um, the contact Kai Vena, and I will use this ID. Again, in practice, of course, you use um, variables here, but for this um, simple demo, it's fine to hard code it here, I think. So um, now I'm done with this component here, and let's uh, move over to the map component. In the map component, um, we first have to tell um, the component what should be the, the input which we push as output to the next components. So it's always the same. You have input from one component to the next ones, and you have to configure the input to map it to get some output out of this component. And that's the important thing here. Um, it doesn't matter what technologies you use, like JMS or HTTP, or what um, enterprise applications you use, like Salesforce or SAP. Um, it doesn't matter, it's always the same concept. So these mappings here and so on, it looks always the same stuff, no matter what you have to integrate. And um, that makes it so easy to implement all that stuff here. That's really important to understand. Here um, I um, do not use um, some schemas like an um, web service SOAP response or another XML schema. I'm just creating a very simple um, schema here by myself. So again, this is just for demo purpose and not for real projects. But here I think it is fine. I use um, a person. And this person contains two parameters, an ID and a um, full name. I um, explicitly use full name here because I also want to show you some transformation and how it is done um, because it's a typical use case. And um, in this case, um, the Salesforce component um, gets me the first name and the last name. But my output, in this case, just a log, but it might be SAP or something else. Um, requires me to add um, a full name. So I have to do some mapping here. So here you can see the output of this mapping is um, the person with the ID and full name. And now I can do the mapping here. So on the right side I see um, my result which I want to push to the next component. And um, to do this I do some graphical mapping here. And um, it is really just um, drag and drop. And um, here one problem with Salesforce is um, that we have to do a coercion here first um, to add the metadata of our Salesforce query. 
So um, let me first show you how to do it and then explain why we do it. So we click on coercion and we have to add um, the metadata from our Salesforce metadata and I have to tell him this is a contact, right? And here's also the reason why do we have to do this? Because with other um, components like JMS connector or SAP connector, where you call API uh, BARPs or IDOCs or so, you don't need to do that. But with Salesforce, um, Salesforce API is using S objects. So every query always returns an, an very general S object. Right? And so you have to tell him um, what type is this result of your query. This is no issue of TIPCO, but this is um, due to the um, conf uh, configuration and concepts of the Salesforce API. So um, we do this coercion here and apply and save. And now when we go back here, we see all the metadata from our contact. And now we can do this mapping. We just drag and drop the ID to this field. And for the full name, we also have to do a transformation. Um, so we can also open the mapping editor here, which is a little bit more comfortable. It um, generates XPath under the hood, but um, you don't know X, uh, you don't need to know XPath, right? I'm also no XPath expert. You just um, uh, drag and drop um, the data and use functions, and the XPath is generated for you. Of course, you can edit the XPath where you need it, where do you want it? In this case, we use the concat function. And um, from our query from Salesforce, um, we push in our first name and then I add an empty space and then we use our last name here. So this is the drag and drop. And um, this formula builder here always evaluates it um, dynamically. And here it still complains, those are, those are warning, expected is non-repeating and we got repeating. Right, so um, the problem here still is that um, we are getting um, more than one record here, it thinks, because a Salesforce query, like a SQL query, can return um, more than one record. And of course, then you have to process more. But in this case, um, we just have one record. So um, I just got my parentheses, which I don't know under the Linux VM here. And here we just um, say, okay, um, this is just use um, one record here. Because we now we know our Salesforce query just returns one contact because we added the ID of it, the unique ID. And that's the reason why we can just add um, use the one here, the one record. And as you can see here, dynamically it evaluates correctly now. Other, the, the warning is gone. And it's even though intelligent that if we add zero here, for example, you can see XPath indexes are one based. So it helps you a lot um, while doing some mappings here, as you can see. Now um, it is done and you can finish here. And we have to do the same um, for our ID. So here we also have to say, just use um, the first record because we only will get one here in this example. If you have a query where you get more than one record, just say a statement. And in this case, we would use a surround before each. And um, that's it for them. So you still don't have to do any coding or so when you do more complex mappings, right? Okay, so now um, the mapping is also done. And um, we can go to our third component. The third one is the log component. And here um, you see just there's a message. And we will use our mapping data. Here you can see map data. That's the data from this mapping component. And here we have the output which we configured before. Here's our person, and this is our transformed full name, and we just drag and drop it here. And that's it. You can also evaluate here on um, these mappings and check, and it would show errors if there are some, but we are fine. So we can uh, save our project here. Now, um, once again, we want to test all that stuff because our implementation is done now. So we are loading um, only this new process and let's say load and start current. I hope I didn't do any errors in my implementation. I didn't, as you can see, it all runs here perfectly. Um, don't, we are done with our implementation. I just want to show you one more um, feature here. Besides the testing here, you of course can also do um, visual debugging. 
So just here, in this case, I use map data, right click, and say um, set breakpoint after this component. And you can see it here. And if I run a new instance of this process, it stops here at the moment. And I can debug and see my input here, um, in this case, is Kai Vene. So you can see um, until here it worked correctly. Um, so you can do debugging here and you can also stage, uh, change stuff here. So if you use an, an IDE for Java or .NET development, you can also do it in a debugger. And here it's the same. So we can just say this is a test name. And if we continue our debugging now, then it runs successfully. But um, it changed this um, variable here. So in the logging component, we can see here our input is test name. So as you can see here, um, debugging is also very, very um, easy here. Um, one last feature here regarding development I want to show you um, is that um, you can also use um, groups um, to combine um, different um, um, components. And here you can easily um, configure stuff besides iteration. So for example, you can define critical sections and transactions and so on. So it's very easy to um, implement more complex stuff. One uh, more thing finally is um, regarding the Salesforce components. Um, you, you, of course, um, you, in this case, which I implemented before, um, you had to, to start the business works process which um, pulls Salesforce. Of course, you can also implement push implementation, um, which is done here. Um, here, I just used the um, Salesforce outbound message listener, listener and this one is um, waiting until Salesforce creates a message. And here in Salesforce, I have um, defined an outbound message um, which create, um, sends um, some message when a new contact is created. And then I get all this metadata here in this outbound message of Salesforce. So this is not TIPCO, this is Salesforce. And then in TIPCO, um, I can just use um, all this information again. So here I also see all this metadata in this S object. So and, um, here I'm waiting for the, these specific output bound messages from Salesforce. And here again, I can use email and first name and last name. And then I can map it again here, as you can see, right? So it's very easy. Um, also, if you want to do push based, not just pull based um, mappings. And um, one last thing, as I have said, it doesn't matter what you want to use. Um, you can use Salesforce or SAP or any other technologies and enterprises. Um, you just do some different configuration. So for example, for the uh, SAP components, here, um, of course, you have to use things like um, fetch your IDOCs or RFCs and BAPIs. And then inside the mappings, it would look the same. Though then you don't use um, your Salesforce component, but um, use the SAP component. But the mappings are still the same. The only difference is here you would see um, not your Salesforce component, but here um, you would see um, a SAP mapping component, right? So that's also um, very important to understand. So in this um, around 20 minute demo, I showed you how easy it is um, to integrate different enterprise applications such as Salesforce or SAP, doing some mappings and then pushing the data to another system. In this case, we used our um, TIPCO social network Tibber. So I hope um, this helped you. And now let's stop the recording. Goodbye.